coming to you live and direct tonight. We've got a special treat for you coming from right here at Black Facts Central. See what we got tonight. Proverb of the day is, it is the duty of children to wait on elders and not the elders on the chillin. It is the duty of the children to wait on elders and not the elders on children. Hmm. There's keep in mind. And that is a proverb from Kenya, East Africa. So tonight we're going to um, be doing our last poem out of this particular book, Lift Every Voice and Sing. We've got a new book of poems we'll be coming out of starting on Moon Day this upcoming week. But this one here is called Vashti. Now, I have no explanation. I have no idea why it's called Vashti. Let's read and see. I sometimes take you in my dreams to a far off land I used to know. Back in the ages long ago, a land of palms and languid streams, a land by night of jeweled skies, by day of shores that glistened bright, within whose arms outstretched and white, a sapphire sea lay a crescent wise, where twilight fell like silver floss, where rose the golden moon half hid behind a shadowy pyramid, a land beneath the Southern Cross, and there the days dreamed in their flight, each one a poem chanted through, which at its close was merged into the muted music of the night. And you were a princess in those days, and I, I was your serving lad. But who ever served with heart so glad or lived so for a word of praise? And if that word you chanced to speak, how all my senses swayed and reeled. Till low beside your feet I kneeled with happiness or rot and weep. If when your golden cup I bore, you deigned to lower your eyes to mine, eyes cold yet fervent like the wine, I knew not how to wish for more. I trembled at the thought to dare, to gaze upon, to scrutinize the deep sea mystery of your eyes, the sunlit splendor of your hair, to let my timid glances rest upon you long enough to note how fair and slender was your throat, how white the promise of your breast. And though I did not dare to chance a lingering look and open gaze upon your beauty's blinding rays, I ventured many a stolen glance. I fancied too, but could not state what trick of mine the fancy caused. At times your eyes upon me paused and marked my figure lift and straight. Once when my eyes met yours, it seemed that in your cheek, despite your pride, blush arose and swiftly died. Or was it something that I dreamed? Within your radiance, like the star of morning, there I stood and served. Close by, unheeded, unobserved, you were so near and yet so far. I just to stretch my hand and touch the musky sandals on your feet, my breaking heart of rapture sweet, it never could have held so much. Oh, beauty haunted memory, your face so proud, your eyes so calm, your body like a slim young palm, and sinuous as a willow tree, caught up beneath your slender arms and girdled round your supple waist. A robe of curious silk that graced, but only scarce concealed your charms. A golden band about your head, a crimson jewel at your throat which when the sunlight on its smote turned to a living heart and bled. But oh, that mystic bleeding stone, that work of nature's magic art, which mimics so a wounded heart could never bleed as did my own. Now after ages long and sad in this stern land, we meet anew. No more princess proud are you. And I, I am no serving lad. And yet dividing us, I meet a wider gulf than that which stood between a princess of the blood and him who served low at her feet. Well, that was a very interesting poem. And that is a poem by James Weldon Johnson, same man who wrote Lift Every Voice and Sing.
Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you've learned as much about him as I have. Yes, yes, yes. Every day we learn something new. Okay, so we're back to our, our main story tonight, which is the story of Frederick Douglass. This will be Frederick Douglass, part two. Frederick Douglass, part two. Oops, can't see it on there. Frederick Douglass, there we go. Boom, can you see it there? All right. Okay. Um, he's talking about Frederick Douglass teaching other black youngsters how to read. He furnished them with books. Read what you can, I'll help you with the rest. These lessons were cut short when at the age of 16, Fred was sent back to the eastern shore of Maryland and as the property of Hugh Auld's brother, Thomas. God bless you, Fred. March 1833, Fred arrives at St. Michael's. Freedom is going to be harder to reach. From this place, I may need a boat. Thomas Auld used to use his light to use his whip. Hurry, let's see some work here. Come on, faster, boy. He starved his slaves, forcing them to steal or beg from strangers and neighbors to survive. Hurry, hurry. He professed to be a religious man. Oh, good Jesus, help us light the way. If he has so much religion, why doesn't he free his slaves? What kind of God would let a man like him be saved? Wonders Frederick Douglass. Fred met a free black man named James Mitchell. Would you like to teach at my Sundays at my school on Sunday? Yes, I'd love to. Heaven is the kingdom. At the second meeting, stop it. No more of this reading. Get out, all of you. Can't you do anything right? All that learning, learning has ruined you. I'm sending you out to be broken. Frederick's life became more unbearable. Covey was known as first rate at breaking young black men. Here's what you'll be getting, boy, if you don't behave. Thus, Fred entered a new life, that of a field hand. Here, boy, take this ox cart and get some wood. But, but, Mr. Covey, I don't know how to handle oxen. Shut up and get moving. Whoa! Crash right through the fence. Fool, you'll pay for smashing that fence. Take off your work clothes. No, you'll have to beat me with them on. After being severely beaten, I'll go to Mr. Ald. He doesn't care about me, but he won't want his property damaged. Headed for Thomas Ald's general store, Fred runs into the woods, chased by Kobe. Come back, fool. Fred manages to get away from Kobe. What is it, boy? What are you doing here? Please help me, sir. Mr. Kobe whipped me, and he is right to punish you. You're lazy. Please, sir, I'm sick and hurt. Bye. I don't believe you. You just don't want to work. You're impudent. I should beat you too. Impudence was a crime deserving a beating. It could be only a look, a smile, or any word. Fred is dismayed. All right, boy. What do you want me to do? Find me a new home. Kobe will kill me. No, Kobe is a good religious man. Besides, I'll lose wages on you. Religious like you, thinks Frederick. Now, go. I... I can't return tonight. Fred was permitted to stay the night. At daybreak, he started the trip back. Near Kobe's farm, Fred sees him in the distance. Fearing punishment for running away, he hides in the woods. Still hiding after nightfall, he hears footsteps approaching. He was relieved to see that it was Sandy Jenkins, a friend from the Freeland farm. Sandy, it's you. Fred, what happened to you? He told Sandy about the beating. I don't want to go back. Come with me. You need food and rest. Sandy's wife was free, and his owner allowed him to live with her. Running away won't help you. Help, you'll get caught. Fred was persuaded to return to Covey. The next morning as he arrived back at the farm, Covey and his wife were leaving for church. Morning, Fred. Feeling better? He's pretending to be a Christian because it's Sunday. Monday morning, Kobe is back to normal. I'll teach you to run away from me. Let go of me. Fred kicked him in the gut. Oof. The penalty for fighting back was hanging. 
but what's come over you? Are you crazy? You've beat me for the last time. Help me. Somebody help me, says if Fred grabs him by the arms. <laughs> One of Kobe's helpers answers his call for help while Fred's kicking his behind. Um, for help. Kicks Fred off of Kobe. Fred knocks the helper cold. Two slaves appear. Grab him quick or you'll both be punished. But the slaves refuse to help leaving Kobe to a task he cannot handle alone. Fred tosses Kobe out of the stable. All right, now go back to work. I'm done beating you now. Kobe made no complaint against Fred because he didn't want to know that he had been beaten. Fear gone, he now felt like a man. During the next six months, Kobe never touched Fred again. When a slave can't be beaten, he's half free. Thanks, Fred. In 1835, Fred now, how old? 18 years old, was hired out to William Freeland. Fred, this is Sandy, Henry, John, and Handy. Later, we heard that you can read and write. Will you teach us? Maybe I can begin a school here, Fred says to him. They met secretly every Sunday. Soon the class grew to 40 students. By attending each student, each one of them risked a lashing and Fred risked being sold in the South. A year passed and many learned to read and write. With Sandy and several others to tell of his plans to escape. Why don't you come with me? How will we pass the borders? We don't even know what's beyond Baltimore. We could row out to the head of the bay, then walk the rest of the way. It'll make free I'll make free papers. It should work. Free men had to carry proof that they were free, just like they did in South Africa. I'll come. Me too. Count us all in, Fred. Good. Two nights before Easter, Fred made free papers. We'll leave tomorrow night. On the day of the escape, Fred, you boys, come over here. As they reached Freeland and the group one of them slapped Fred. Another one began to tie Sandy's hands. What are your plans, boy? Someone talk, Fred thinks. Freeland took them inside where the other slaves that were planning to escape were tied up already. All right, where are those phony free papers? One of the slaves threw out the ropes and began to struggle. In the confusion, Fred threw the passes into the fireplace. They subdued the slave. Now, where are those papers? What papers, sir? What's going on? Search him. We know that you plan an escape, Fred. No, sir. We have proof. What proof, sir? I'm taking you all to jail. Okay, move. He still the white man, the, the sheriff says at gunpoint. Later at the jailhouse, so you boys are going to run away. Where is there to run? Teach him a lesson. String him up. After the Easter holidays, Freeland went to see the constable. You can release my boys, but keep Fred. A week later, Thomas all took Fred out of jail. I thought it over, Fred. Instead of selling you south, I'm sending you back to Hugh in Baltimore. Thank you, sir. I want you to learn a trade. If you behave, maybe I'll free you when you're 25. That's too good to be true. In Baltimore, Fred started learning his trade in the shipyard, but he was not welcome. Fred, get some water over here. Fred, Fred, bring that roller here. Fred, ca come carry this wood. Fred. Bring me some tissue. Fred, why don't you? During the next year, Fred was attacked and beaten by workers, but he learned his trade well. Every week when Fred was paid, his entire wages went to Hugh Auld. He didn't earn it. I owe him nothing, Fred thinks. Fred met Anna Murray, a free woman. Glad to meet you, says Fred. Months later, oh, looks like they're married. Hugh Auld's greed soon became too much for Fred. Is this all? And Fred thinks, robber. Fred decided to escape. If you're caught this time, they'll sell you south for sure. I'll send for you when I'm safe. Fred borrowed papers from a free friend. I owe you my life for this. If you're caught, I may lose mine. I'll send them back to you. My No form of slavery could hold Fred that morning. Willing to risk death, he began his life as a free man. On September 4, 1835, after several narrow escapes, he arrived in New York City. A few hours later, he met Jake, an old friend from slavery. Be careful, the slave catchers. 
are everywhere. Trust no one. What? Where? Fred is dismayed. What will I do, he thinks. No money, no work. Doesn't have a clue. Soon after, Fred located members of the Underground Railroad. This is Mr. Ruggles, one of our leaders. I can help you. You'll need a place to stay. A few days later, Anna arrived and they were married. We've planned everything. You're to leave right away for New Bedford. You can find work there. Good luck. Thanks for everything. In New Bedford, Massachusetts, they were met by Nathan Johnson. The rent is cheap. It should do for a while. To protect yourself, you should change your name. Douglas would do. Frederick Douglas. Yes, I like that. Fred was refused work in his trade, so he cut wood, dug cellars, loaded boats, and built fences. Shortly after, Fred began to read The Liberator, an anti-slavery newspaper published by William Lloyd Garrison. He's sitting there reading the paper and thinking, hey, this guy knows what he's talking about. I agree. Well, I've got two more pages to read. I'm going to go ahead and finish these off. We must support Garrison. In less than three years after his escape, Fred rose to a position of leadership in New Bedford. We'll take a vote. At an anti-slavery convention in Nantucket, Mr. Garrison, I'd like you to meet Mr. Douglas. William Lloyd Garrison, founder of the New England Anti-Slavery Society, had also been jailed and attacked for his anti-slavery activities. Frederick was asked to speak to the convention. Bravo, bravo, brilliant, brilliant. You must become a speaker for us. Excellent speech, Frederick. And so began the career of one of the greatest spokesmen for human rights. Next up, Frederick Douglass, part three. So we'll move on to that um, on a, in the new day. No, um, yeah, on Monday. So we'll, we'll be doing, we'll be continuing his story through the rest of the week. Uh, it'll take us almost till Friday to finish it. And then we'll have a special presentation by Frederick Douglass. We're going to have Frederick Douglass with you. He's going to be our special guest this week on Saturday and on Sunday. Come check it out live. We'll be doing a live stream from 12 noon to 1 o'clock Saturday and on Sunday with Frederick Douglass. If you'd like to meet Frederick Douglass for yourself, be there or be square. We're, we're, we're signing out right now. Uh, all you little children, you know what to do. Do I have to tell you one more time to lay down that little head on your little pillow, on your little bed, and sleep tight, sleep right, and please, please, please don't let those bed bugs bite. But if they do, hit them with a shoe till they turn black and blue. Thank you. See you on the new day. Peace out. This is Doc Ock signing out. <laughs>